Okay, this is a banded, banded pouch. That's what I call it that I'm working. This is a done one. I'm starting to make a little smaller one. This one has five segments in it. A bottom round bit and a top band around it for the closure and a pull through of, made of leather. I'm doing a smaller one. Quite a lot smaller actually. This one's going to have six panels, alternating colors of brown and black. These pouches are fairly easy to do. You don't have to have a huge piece of leather. This is all done from scraps or the small bits of leather that I got from Hobby Lobby. This is one and a half inches wide by four. Just mark them out wherever you can get them and cut them. You'll need a little bit bigger piece for the round piece. I'll cut it after I sew up, get them sewed up to make sure, and I'll count the, the actual measured length of the pieces once it's together. Then you can divide it by pi, and then you'll get your diameter of the circle you'll need. And if you're careful, you can get your holes to line up pretty, pretty close. This one I did, I was off by two, but you can tell in the bottom, well you can't really tell in the bottom, there's one spot right there where you kind of puckered a little bit to skip a, skip a stitch basically to pull up a hole so you don't have a great big pucker. Well, you count them out and figure out and you can do it evenly around and make it look like you actually did plan it that way. <laughs> it's a matter of hiding your mistakes more than anything. But this is easy enough to do. All you need is a ruler, a pen, and a book, a box, something square that, you know, you you draw your edge out, cut it off, or draw your edge out to straighten it, measure up your inch and a half, then take something to square, line it up here, draw your line, then measure out your four inches, or however long you want to make, make it, and start cutting. Okay, after you get your panels cut out, use whatever you're going to use to punch holes. And you can use an all uh, a modified ice pick, especially for something like this. One of these. I'll run it in just a, a bit on the inside. You can mark lines on the inside if you want to keep your line straight if you're doing it for the, initially. After a little bit, you pick it up and you can get to where you can do it fairly easily by eye. Your eye is a pretty good measure. I'll usually go in the distance of between the prongs and you can kind of mark it that way too which this one's four millimeter you got a choice between five and six millimeter this is a smaller pouch so I'm gonna sew it a little different and I want a little bit tighter normally the last pouch I run six millimeter so you know it won't be too big a difference just more stitches you know, I'm gonna use a smaller thread probably but to use this you take, I use a piece of wood with an ingrain and just start setting it in. I like the ingrain because it doesn't deform if you accidentally hit a knot with this you'll bend the prongs, done that. You can get these off of Amazon for, I don't know, $10 a set, which I've mentioned before in previous videos, they're easy enough to find. To make this pouch, the sides all six sides have have to be punched around all four corners or all four sides and this is the first set of punch when you after you've pushed it through into the wood your holes will be all the way through you can take this out move it over put the left the this is a six tine punch so you put the end tine in the last hole which will line up the set and every time you punch it through you'll get five holes you can move it back and forth to get everything lined up the way you need to at the end but that's just go all the way around both all four sides you'll have the holes punched do that six times then your pieces are set and ready to start sewing together okay now we're ready for the bottom what I did is I've got these all sewn together I haven't sewn the edge up yet then you straighten it out and I stretched it just a little bit and it gave me seven and a half inches. All right, divide that by 3.14, which is pi. And it works out to be just a, oh, 2.4. So the extra around that, I gave it about 2.6 inches, roughly. Okay, and you can see 
I don't have a compass handy, so what I did is I put a central point in, split that measurement in half of the diameter, take my ruler and mark the, set it on the center point, then put a mark and just move around the circle until I have a full circle connected up, and you can kind of see, you can see the uh, marks right there. Connect them up and then cut it out. Then you'll go inside the line just a little bit. Ideally, you want to count all the holes that you punched in across the base and try to match the number going around. That's the tricky part. The holes are, or the, the holes were counted. The base of the circle's cut out, the base of the bottom. So this is going to be the bottom. The holes are marked. Let's see if you can... I didn't punch them all the way through. I just took my little tool and went around and counted, putting just little indentations to count the holes to make sure they matched up. And if they don't, if you've got it set right, you can, to get less holes, you can close it in a little bit. Or to get more, you can move it out just a, just a touch, and you can add a, a hole or two or three. You won't get a whole lot, but that'll get you really close. If your measurements were pretty well on, you should be within a hole or two, and you can fudge that in the bottom as you're working it around. So this is fairly close. Next, I'm going to punch the holes with this one. The six the six hole punch won't work because it's too long, so you'd get a bunch of little flats on there that would be in a lot farther than what I want for the edge. Okay, now I'm sewing the bottom in. I got the last side completed sewn up. This is being sewn inside out because I want the seams in. If you want it the other way, just sew everything outside like this and you can do some fancy stitching around the outside so it looks different. I've done that on some of them, but this one I decided to do in. Now I'm about halfway around the bottom. My count come out pretty close so it won't take much to alter things and just simple in and out stitch all the way around then go back around or you can if you have two needles you can do it that way okay after you got the bottom sewn in yeah this isn't a very big pouch but after you get the bottom sewn in then I cut a collar you don't have to do this you can go ahead and knock some holes in this turn it inside out or turn it right side out and run lacing in and use it as it is. But this I want to add in a band and the band's short it'll stop over here. And then I've got another bit that I'm going to add in for a belt loop so it can actually be carried on a, on a belt is the initial purpose. It happens to be an inch and a half tall band. Again it depends on what you're setting up. But if your holes are all punched as they should be with the same tool, they'll line up precisely. Once the bottom's sewn in the pouch, you turn it inside out. That can sometimes be a trick depending on the size of the pouch and the stiffness of the leather. But I use, you can use a bit of broom handle. What I tend to use is the little plastic mallet that I use to punch and stamp and stuff with. And just hold the mallet in between my either my feet or my legs, the mallet head, and shove it down the base of the over the handle as you're rolling the top down. Start, you know, you just start shoving the bottom up through like that, and then just keep rolling the sides down around it. It can be a trick. It's not anywhere near as bad as a pair of turn shoes, but depending on the size of the size of the pouch and, like I said, the leather, it can kind of suck. But you end up with this. You just work it out, push the seams out, then as you use it, everything kind of tends to fill out a little better and get to where it needs to be. And you end up with a nice pouch. Smash the subscribe button such as you would your fearsome foe.